Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon. This is Chuck Bardron with the University of Georgia. Um, thanks everyone for joining us live on this uh, um, Friday afternoon after after Halloween, I guess, um, um, as part of the um, e Sisma and FISP um, Halloween 2018 activities. Um, we decided to do an EdMaps. I've got one. Um, update. I'm going to give a little bit of a background of, of how we got to where we are and then where we're going and show some of the features of the app and of the website. And I'll be glad to answer any questions as they may come up. So just to clarify, I may use these back and forth, but um, EdMaps is a national maybe North American wide invasive species mapping platform. And I've got one is the name of the app that feeds into that platform for Florida. Um, and I've got one.org also takes you to the website um, through the Florida interface. And so whether we talk about Ed Maps, whether we talk about I've got one, those are the equivalent, um, those are equivalent things um, I've got one is just the, the interface specific for Florida, and that's to tie in with the um, reporting hotline number. So EdMaps was created um, at the University of Georgia with input from a bunch of different groups. And, and what we had done for many years were collect slides, collect information about different species. Those were then wrapped into um, photo CD products ultimately into the forestry images and other bugwood image systems. Um, a lot of that was focused on forest health to begin with. Forest health grew into invasive plants being a bigger, bigger topic within, within um, forest health. And so we started doing some work on invasive plants, um, released a couple of different products, including the invasive plants of Eastern United States um, CD-ROM, but there was also always a problem. Um, we were missing good maps. There were a lot of maps out there, but none of them really told the whole story across the U.S. or even across the states, um, in you know, in in within an individual state for that matter. Um, so we looked at what was out there. We um, talked to the folks who had been running the invasive plant outlets of New England and what lessons they had learned. We looked at the North American invasive plant mapping standards. Um, those are held by the North American Weed Management Association, which is now the North American Invasive Species Management Association. And those have been a standards going back even earlier than 2002 um, for how invasive plant, invasive weed, um, reports should be collected, what kind of information should go along with those. So we looked at that and then around the same time, Google Maps had released an API and that API allowed you to overlay your information on top of their Google Maps platform. So that kind of helped started pulling everything together. We said, what do we really need? Well, we need two things. We need an easy way for electronic reporting of new finds and then we need a common operating platform across the entire, um, um, you know, U.S. where all the data can be aggregated together and and work, and everybody can talk in the same language. So that's what we did when we created EdMaps. Um, we started back in 2005 
Um, we originally were focused on the southeast. Um, the Everglades was actually one of our first projects um, related to um, to helping build this system. Um, and, and speaking of that, one of the strengths of EdMaps is, and I've included some of the major funders here, but it's been funded by a lot of different organizations um, over the 13 years that it's existed, um, both federal and state and nonprofit, and that has really made um, EdMaps a strong product in terms of its availability and its and its scope of use and, and we've kind of made sure that projects have built on each other and continue to improve the overall platform and and that you know is all really tied back to the website and here's the the edmaps um florida interface um we've looked, done a lot of work and i'm gonna I'm show a little bit of information here on um on different types of users we realize that you know a lot of our data comes in as bulk data, but we've also had now over 152,000 reports come in from either the smartphones or on the web. And when we really look at that data, we realize that that's from a large number of users with 98% of our um, reporters having less than 1,000 reports and 94% having less than 100. There's a lot of reporters with one or two or, or even five or six records going in. And, and with the smartphone apps and with that interface, we're really starting to see that change and really a good a good switch over to starting to use these apps, which makes it a lot easier to collect the photographs and to collect the GPS information for where a, a, a plant or animal would be. And so speaking of that data going in, you know, it goes in through the website. We've got a web form. Um, try to make it as easy as possible for you for it to be filled out, information be added, um, and it and it from there be uploaded onto the website and go through the verification process. And I'm going to show this in more detail in a few minutes. But um, we also have the bulk data uploader. So if you have an existing database, you have your own information, and you want to take that information and send it to us for uploading into the website, then that's always an option. And once you're logged in, you can go to my uploads and upload um, shape files or Excel spreadsheet or, or CSV files. And then once that data is all collected, is to produce maps like this. So you have the county distribution map um, showing different things. This is one we did showing where, you know, it was just literature based. We've had an observation come in for ad maps or we have both that literature basis for the record, herbarium basis for the record, as well as an observation that's come in. When you zoom in, then you can start seeing, you know, here's Brazilian pepper along, um, along Alligator Alley in Florida, um, or Tamiami Trail, I'm sorry, in Florida. And, um, and then you can even zoom in closer and look at an individual patch. And here was a sketch mapping data where you can see even at the patch showing up um, on the Google map behind the um, where the polygon was drawn. Um, Florida is where a good bit of our data um, um, is from. If you look across the U.S., you can tell there's obviously a few states, um, Minnesota, Utah, for example, um, where there's a lot of data going into the system. And then some other areas where, you know, both the counties are smaller, so this map doesn't show the density as well, um, and there's just not as much data being collected. Um, as I said earlier, EdMaps is kind of broken into these different projects right now, um, with I've got one being the, the Florida project. Overall, EdMaps has over 4 million records now. Um, many of, about a million of those are at the county level only. Um, and the other, about 3.2 million, there's a latitude and longitude associated with it. That's covering 4,600 species um, from 15,000 different sources or reporters um, and with about 49,000 total users who have signed up for EdMaps accounts. The scope of the data um, nationally is still very heavy on the plant side, but as I'll show you in a second, um, in Florida, we, we do have a lot of wildlife reports coming in. Um, we looked at 2007 on how much data was coming in, and we were averaging 
Um, EdMaps wide, wide, about 105 reports a day, um, with the most being right at 980 coming in in April. Um, and then overall, there were um, 38,000 reports that came in from 4,800 different reporters covering about 825 different species. Um, and, and as you can see, this, this graph shows the difference between the web um, versus iOS and Android. We had a spike because of a project in 2016. Um, but overall, um, you know, we, we're seeing this increase in the smartphone use and this increase and in, um, in, in really, but the web has continued to increase um, as well. We're, we're seeing a nice flow with the one um, anomaly in 2016. Um, and the states that are really actively promoting, actively using EdMaps are the states where we have the most data. Um, Minnesota, Utah, Florida, um, as three of the example, um, examples, Georgia and Wisconsin, Ontario um, would be others where there's an active outreach program going on in the state. There's information that's, that's out there. There's agencies in the state using it. And that's obviously where you're going to get the most data. Um, we did an interesting um, comparison to look at the data coming in in Florida, um, comparing plants to animals. And, and it was about 80-20. Um, with the plants versus the animals um, coming in. But when you switch to smartphones, that starts to change and you start seeing a lot more reports coming in of animals um, through the smartphone than, than through the web. And I think a lot of that is just the convenience of reporting. Um, however, when you switch and start looking at where the data is coming from, how it's being entered in Florida, um, it's still a lot of people reporting through the web. And, and that's something as we started looking at this that that um, over the next um, six months, we're going to work on improving that web interface because we still have that core group of users um, that are using the website. Um, it's starting to decrease if you if you look at just the last year versus um, versus of all time. You know that number of web users is starting to decrease, but there's still a good number of them out there. Um, this was a graph that we looked at. We we're looking at to see. You know what time of the year are most of the reports coming in um and looking at it obviously you know july august september we're starting to see that move upward in april and so we're going to work um over the next few years and making sure that our new releases of new updates and as well as um, webinars like this are done on on a more regular basis and they tie to the beginning of a field season when you're going to start to see that push. And we mentioned the apps a lot, um, fair amount of downloads of these apps still. We're still seeing um, a little bit higher on the iOS side than the Android side, but the usage being a lot closer. Um, one of the things that, that comes up sometimes and I wanted to touch on before I switch over to the app and the website. Um, so the verification system um, for EdMaps is um so the verification system in edmaps um all the reports that come in go through that verification system and so you start and they come in um, through the web through the smartphone apps through web forms that are embedded on other websites um, or it comes in as bulk data and all of that data is essentially comes in whether it's a spreadsheet with thousands of records um, or it's a single rec record coming from a smartphone app all of that comes in as a new report and then that new report goes through a verification process and before it is made public before it's made available um, for anyone else to see then it goes through this verification process if it's a um, regulated species if it's something um, that could have trade concerns. Um, spotted lanternfly is a new one that, that's coming up a lot um, um, in Pennsylvania and some of the surrounding states. Something like that, when it comes in, it goes straight to the state regulatory officials um, in the state, and those are who look at it before anybody else. For other species, for the wildlife, they go in, and there's these different verifiers set up at different levels, um, either by species, by location, usually county, or by some kind of project, or there's also state verifiers um, who can look at all the plants in the state 
And so the species comes in, those report comes in and they're forwarded to the appropriate person for verification. Once that happens, then the user level alerts go out, um, the, the points are added to the maps um, and they're available through our API for any other systems that may be using that data. Um, and, you know, I mentioned earlier about thinking about outreach and, and, you know, we've seen a lot of examples of how folks have promoted things, um, you know, but really the best way to do it is to get out in the field and show somebody how to use it. Um, Ontario has done some interesting things with social media, um, doing Map It Mondays, um, where you show a, a picture and something and try to fill in the distribution. Um, but I still go back to some of the best outreaches is what's happened with Florida, what's happened in Florida with the I've got one.org and tying it to the phone number. Um, that really makes an impact. And um, when I talk about ed maps in other states, they're like, well, how, how do we figure out how to do that? Um, so ed maps, we've really tried to build a tool for every job. Um, between the alerts, the verification system, um, you know, really try to build a way that data can be shared, data can be used, um, and, and have a way to make the job of managing and reporting invasive species easier. Um, a few years ago, we moved all of our infrastructure up into um, to the Amazon cloud, and they're all the, the servers are running there now. Um, and for the folks that care about the techie stuff, it's running SQL Server, and there's also an ArcGIS instance running behind it. Um, the switch over to the web interface um, and show a few things there um, that are just easier to show live. So this is the EdMaps Florida homepage. As you can see, you've got a feed of the recent reports coming in. Um, links to the smartphone app, and then these tabs across the top. Uh, most everybody is pretty simple. Report a species. You choose what you're reporting. Um, you get a custom form based on that. So if we're reporting, um, um, let's say, Kogan grass, um, we saw it today. We've added this recently where you can report something um, that you didn't find in a location. Or if you found it and you treated it at the same time, you can go ahead and mark it as treated when it goes in. Um, you know, dates populated. You say, okay, well, it was about it was about three acres that I saw, um, and then you have other things such as habitat. What kind of habitat was it found in? Um, what what what? life stage was the plant in? Was it a mature plant? Was it um, flowering? Were there fruit, seed? Something we've added um, recently as well is do you notice any damage? So there's a project at University of Florida where they're really looking to see, um, you know, for possible damage to some of these plants, you know, whether it's feeding damage from an insect or from a pathogen. And so this is a way to kind of help with that project. If you hit yes, um, then it asks you to upload a picture below as part of this report. Um, you given the map here, um, you can zoom into your location. So let's just say I was um, over here in, um, where do I want to go? We'll just go to um, zoom in here and you find where, where you're looking at, and let's say there was Kogan grass along here, you can drop a, a point. When you drop that point, it's going to automatically fill in your county um, and your latitude and longitude there. Um, if you decide that, hey, maybe it's more of an impact, if I draw a polygon, then you have that option now right here where you can draw the polygon in and it actually will calculate your infested acres for you up here at the top based on the size of that polygon. Um, you can mark it if it's on private property and you don't want the latitude and longitude um, to be made public. You can check this here and make it mark it as private. And then you have the ability to upload up to five pictures, provide a caption for those pictures, and, um, 
and provide, you know, if somebody else happened to take the picture other than you, then you can, um, you can put that in for document that information as well. And then additional comments, you hit submit. As soon as you hit submit, that goes in, the record is sent to the verifiers for review. Um, and then once it is verified, it, it then goes into the system and becomes a point on the map. If we go back to the home page, um, go back to the Florida home page, actually, then um, one of the other features that, that we've added recently is the ability to do a revisit. And so when you're logged in and you're looking at distribution, let's just say we're looking at distribution of Kogon grass, um, you know, we get the map loaded. And let's say that I am... that I was recently at this infestation um, outside of Cedar Key. Well, I now have the ability to go in and do a revisit on this record. And that will allow me to say, hey, well, I was here on this date um, and I was doing an evaluation of that site um, and I treated it. Or let's say, you know, I was doing a treatment, and I treated it or I was going and I was monitoring it and I actually get there and hey, that, that infestation of Kogon grass isn't there anymore. So I mark it as eradicated, I upload pictures to go along with it. And by doing that, it, it changes the color on the map and helps us tell the story that we're not just getting this solid red map of um, Kogon grass, we're starting to treat it, we're starting to eradicate it and we're also finding places where it doesn't exist. And so as you can see, um, you know, the map, we're starting, the map starting to be different. We're starting to look at it um, and, and show a little bit more than just, you know, a whole bunch of points on the map, which is the way things have been for a long time. Um, we've also added the ability to, um, to search for a record. So let's say <coughs> I'm looking for that record right there. I'm able to search for it <coughs> by record ID and actually jump um, to that record when I when I um, when I do it. Um, <coughs> sorry about that. Um, you also can view those points within um, within a species at the um, in a list view. So you can view a list of all the reports that have come in, um, as well as the county maps that we looked at earlier that you can view at the state level or even at the national level to see, you know, at that scope, if you're doing a um, more of an education of what <coughs> the distribution of the species looks like, then here's a way you can show that to somebody. The other features of the website that I think sometimes get forgotten because you're looking to pull a map or you're looking to um, um, report something, we do have a fair amount of species information and pictures that are tied in for these species. So you can go look at a species and see, um, you know, what, what does that species look like? Here's a write-up on the species. Here's information about the species. And here's a selected group of pictures of that species. And so we've been working and updating these um, listing sources um, and, are, and are about to push a big update where, um, where all of these have been updated and cleaned up some in the next few weeks. Switching over to the tools and training, um, one of the features that um, is really powerful as the advanced query tool. So if I want to come in here and I want to see every record, I will do um, every record that Chris Evans, who's in Illinois now, but used to work here, has put in. Then we can query by Chris. It's going to show us all of the records that he's put into EdMaps. But let's say, okay, let's go back and say, I want to see what Chris has done um, in Georgia. 
And so I submit that. And then you're just that you're getting the map with things just narrowed down to Georgia. Um, if I go in here and say, um, okay, what's one of the records? Japanese climbing fern. So if I want to go back and do Georgia, Chris, and then do Japanese um, climbing fern, then a very short, a very quick search, and you're able to pull that information and show that on the map. Um, and it even, if the acreage information is available, it even totals that for you. Um, you can download this information in CSV, KML, GPX, and we're going to have the shapefile download. That was something we had um, and disabled, but that shapefile download is going to be added back to the system very soon. Um, there's also a report verifier lookup. So if you're looking for, um, um, let's just say Melaleuca, um, if I can spell, um, if you're looking for a, who is the verifier, you know, in Florida um, for, um, for Melaleuca in um, a certain location, you choose that species, you put the point on the map, this was in Orange County, um, you know, has it been previous reported? Yes, in Florida, yes, in Orange County, and then here's who gets the verification reports um, when it's found when that species is found and then it also tells you who lists it's, that species as an invasive. Pretty neat tool if you're trying to figure out where something fits or if something falls through the cracks. Um, we've also got some resources for bulk data, uh, bulk updating dating information um, as well as some of the different training materials that have been put together and we're going to be working on really cleaning some of these up and standardizing them and making that available um, over the next year. Um, th the final thing on the website is the um, My Edmap section. When you go to My Edmaps, you'll see you've got this bar along the side. Um, and I've got more options just as an administrator than everybody would. But it gives you statistics on how many reports you've put in. If you're a verifier, it gives you statistics on how many reports you've verified. Um, and it also shows you your recent reports here. Um, you can download that data, um, all your reports or your reports for different projects. You can create alerts. You can say, okay, I wanted, here's my example. I wanted to know when any plant was reported in Benton County, um, Minnesota. That's as simple as setting up an alert here. And as soon as a record, comes into EdMaps and is verified that next day. Um, the alerts run first thing in the morning, about 8 o'clock in the morning. Um, those reports come in and you're able to see what's been, what's come in and, um, um, and, and been verified over the, um, in the last 24 hours. So it's a very good way to stay in touch with what's coming in. Um, and at most, you only get one email um, a day that will come in. Um, the next thing is the My Species list. The My Species list is um, how you can go in, and this is tied in to the EdMaps Pro um, application. And so on the My Species list, you can set up what species and what um, what counties you want included on EdMaps Pro. And, and we've got another webinar that that is specific for how to use EdMaps Pro. Um, but this is a new t tool and we're going to integrate this My Species list into the other app. So that your My Species list on I've Got One will ultimately be able to come from the species list you set up on the website. Um, you also can edit um, your profile here, set things up for what, um, you know, what you want your username to be, change your password, um, put in a little information about you um, to go along there as well. So that's that's something you can do as part of your um, part of your My Edmaps page as well. Um, the My Uploads are here, so this is where you go to upload data. Um, you put a name in, upload it. It's sent to Rebecca Wallace, who handles um, the bulk uploads as they come in. 
Um, last thing on the website, the about page, um, there's a lot of good information here. One of the things we've just added is the code of conduct. The code of conduct is kind of a new thing um, just to kind of show basic, a lot of it's common sense of what you're, what you should do as a reviewer um, and then potentially as a reporter too, if it fits in. Um, and so um, just something we've added recently to kind of give some guidance and a lot of it's simple stuff that, you know, don't publicize a record if you're a verifier unless it's been, um, it's been reviewed, it's been verified. So that's the, the web interface. Um, if you have any questions about that, we can jump back to it. Um, switch over and show the, um, the smartphone app. Um, We have recently added both the um, best way to do this. Um, we've we've added, um, you know, the main app that we're going to talk about is the I've Got One app, um, which is the standard for Florida. We also created a Spanish version of this app. So if you go to I've Got One, you've got the um, the options for animals, plants. Um, you know, your, your list as well as negative survey. And if we go back and go to the Spanish version, similar options, except obviously everything is in Spanish. And so if you were not aware of this, this is a, a very useful tool um, for any Spanish speakers. Um, and the, and the app, the, the reports go into ad maps, just like, um, just like the main app, but it was just a way to provide a tool that would be um, focused on Spanish speaking language. If you look at the, um, um, once you look at an individual species, many of these species have the, um, the information that has been translated um, into Spanish and made available um, that way. Um, we had somebody that worked with us in the University of Florida to do that, that translation. But to go to the main app, um, and that's distracting in the background, to go to the main app, um, you've got plants and animals plus a full list of species. If you go in the animals, um, you can scroll through. They're broken up, broken up by categories. Um, one of the, you know, if you go to, let's just say snakes, um, we included in here some of the native snakes, and that was... Um, not really from a reporting standpoint, but just from an ID standpoint, we figured it was a good idea to make, to have these native snake pictures available as well, um, along with the, the non-native ones. Um, we kept the form fairly simple through the app. Um, this hasn't changed a lot. Um, one of the things that, that you are able to do that, that sometimes um, isn't obvious is the fact that you can go in and actually draw a polygon um, on the app. So you can click on this map button. It pulls up, shows you your current location, and you can go in and, and draw a polygon. And that polygon, it'll calculate the, um, the acres and it will add it in um, to the record. You probably wouldn't do that for a snake but um, it is something you may want to do for the animals. Um, you choose one or multiple. You save that record. It's going to say, hey, shouldn't you take a picture? And yes, you should if there's a way to take a picture, if the animal hadn't already gone. Or if it's a plant, you can always take a picture. So the picture is very important. It's a part that um, helps the verifier determine what, what they need, you know, whether or not the ID is correct. Um, and so we, we add this warning. It's a little bit of a pain just to kind of remind people to take pictures to go along with it. Once that is done, it's saved to the upload queue. Um, and, and we made it where you can um, upload one record at a time now. So you don't have to just worry about uploading everything um, in your queue. Um, and so you can go in and select the record hit update or in this case we're just going to delete it because since it was a test report um it will you can download the app and use it it lets you do everything that 
the app does except for upload the reports until you have signed in. So if you have not logged in to the app, then it will not let you um, upload the reports and it will prompt you um, for doing that. Um, so my list we mentioned earlier right now, this is only in the app. Um, your list is in the app and the list on the website are not synced at this point, um, but they're going to be as we continue to update the app. Um, I've had some questions recently about adding species to the app. Um, if it's a species that you think you're going to be reporting or you get, you want to put some focus on and get it reported, then please just send us an email and we can easily add species to the, um, to the list and, and make those available, um, you know, and, and, over the next um, six months, we're going to push some some updates to the app where those those additions of species will be um, able to be pushed dynamically. And so, without even when the app opens, it'll check to see if there's new species it needs to download. If there is, it will download those onto the app and make those available. Um, if you're working with citizen scientists, one of the interesting features we added. Um, is the negative survey. So you can go in and say, well, I went out and I looked for cane toads and I looked for tree frogs and I looked for hydrilla and I didn't see any of them. Um, that was partly because I was in Georgia, but I, um, I, you know, here's a polygon of the area that I surveyed um, and I was out there for, uh, you know, 45 minutes and save that. And so this is a way that it allows you, especially working with volunteers, to document that they were out doing something. They just didn't see any of the species um, that were the, the primary ones that were the ones that you maybe wanted them to be looking for that day, but it's still a way to document the time and document the species that they were able to identify that they did not see. And that's that's the gist of the app. Um, we've tried to keep it as simple as possible. Um, we have been working on um, the EdMaps Pro app um, as kind of the interface that is for the more advanced users. Um, if you have not tried this app out, um, then it may be worth worth downloading, especially if you're collecting a lot of data. As you can see, the big difference is we do not have the field guide tied to it. So, you know, the I've got one app is there. You've got the field guide. You've got information about the species for a lot of the species there. Um, you know, it's, it's, but it's a little bit slower when you're going through the process to um, report things. With EdMaps Pro, um, it, it starts with the map view, um, and you hit the plus button and it says, okay, do you want to start by just using my location? Do you want to start by drawing a polygon, dropping a marker or taking a photo? And you say, okay, well, I just want to use my location. Um, similar report form to what, what we have in, I've got one, um, your species list. Um, comes up from what I've selected on the web. Um, so again, I, I want Kogon grass. Um, I've got the density, the area, and again, the positive treated and negative that goes along with that. And so if I save that, it's going to show that point on the map for me. So I see where I've already reported as I zoom out. And then depending on what data sets, I have turned on, and I don't think I have any of them turned on right now. Then I can also download these data sets, um, and I'm just going to do Worth County, Georgia, um, and pull those up and see where data has already been collected. Um, and this is really where the power of, of, um, of this app comes in. So Worth County, not a whole lot of report, reports but we do have some, I can click on them, I can see what the species is. And going back to the revisit concept that we mentioned, I mentioned on the website, you also can do a revisit right here um, and say it was treated. 
and then that once that is submitted into the database it will change that color um, of the report from the red to the yellow or to the green if it's been eradicated um, and we're really working to on this app and going to have a new version that's going to come out um, in the next few weeks there's going to add more filtering options that's one of the things we found that as um, you start looking at counties with lots of data, you need different ways to filter that data. So EdMaps Pro, um, it, just another tool to have in the toolbox, a little bit different focus really for people collecting a lot of data um, and that don't necessarily need the, the field guide aspect. Um, switch back to the uh, PowerPoint real quick. Um, Wild Spotter, I did a webinar um, not too long ago for the, for the um, uh, National Association of Invasive Plant Councils about Wild Spotter. Um, if you've got, I've got one in EdMaps kind of in the middle, um, and EdMaps Pro is more the advanced tool for putting data into EdMaps. Wild Spotter is kind of the light version of EdMaps. Um, we're focusing right now, um, it's a project with the U.S. Forest Service. We're focusing on wilderness areas in 12 pilot forests um, in 2018. That list is going to be expanded in, in 2019 to include more forests. Um, and, and the app has just kind of got a little bit different focus, kind of focusing on more of the outdoor enthusiast, um, um, outdoor recreation um, kind of clientele, citizen scientists. Um, than the traditional audience we, we've targeted with um, with the apps. Um, we've we looked at EdMaps Pro already. Um, you know this 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 whole concept of changing the story that the map tells. That's what we're really focused on and what we're going to continue to focus on. Um, and as you can see, once you get a lot of that, it really changes what the map looks like. Um, Anybody who was a verifier received an email um, probably about a month ago about the um, the new EdMaps verification system. Um, and here's a link down at the bottom that, that goes through and shows you exactly how to verify a record in EdMaps using the um, using the new system. Um, and and we're going to have a link off the tools and training page to this as well. But here's here's that down at the bottom of this screen. If you have not seen this this present that presentation, um, got a few questions, and um, I can I can take some more. Um, so the first question: Does the app does a species have to already be in the app to be enterable? Um, yes, it does currently. Um, there is an option in the app for a um, for a the animal is not on any list. Um, if let me switch back and I'll um, I will show you exactly what that looks like. So on the app, you can go to the other unknown animals, and there's also other unknown um, plants. And you can put, I don't know what the animal is or the animal is not on the list. You can put it in that way. And then on the website, the list is a lot longer. And so you can change it to that species on the website. If for some reason the species is not listed on the website, then send me an email and I'll be glad to add it for you. And then you can start reporting it to the website. That's a very quick fix um, and something very easy to be done. Yeah, and, and, and one way to do it is to just put the, um, the name in the comments as well. Um, that is a great, a great option. Um, and then the verifier can actually change the record when it comes in um, if it's something that's already in EdMaps. So any other questions or, or comments? Um, I just thought that sometimes it's good um, to just really go through and point out um, some of the features of EdMaps um, now that we're, you know, going on 13 years and, and continuing to develop and continuing to add new things. Um, but, but I found in some conversations recently that sometimes 
um, we don't do as good a job as we should promoting some of the new features. And so I wanted to do this webinar, um, record it and make it available that you could refer back to and, um, and, and go from there. Um, so a question more about the pro app. I mean, the, the pro app was developed, um, um, the, Utah um, Department of Ag Food and Agriculture and the Utah Weed Supervisors Association and Montana Department of Agriculture came together and said, we need to be able to, um, you know, view all of our existing data on the map, um, do revisits to that data, enter new data quickly, and also have some offline map features um, as part of that, so they can download some of the base maps for their um, for their county, have that county base data available. Um, so when they're out and they don't have cell phone coverage, they have some reference um, on the map um, to where they're at. And so that those were really the key features that we were trying to include in EdMaps Pro. Um, Luckily, I guess is the best way to say it, the counties that really jumped on it and started using it were counties that had um, nearly 20,000 records in their county. And so with those 20,000 records in the county, we really stress test the, have been stress testing the app um, and doing things to improve having that heavy load of, um, of data in one location. And so um, I, as, as we roll it out and push it out to larger audiences, I think we're going to be in really good shape um, because not only is the, um, is the data, it's going to handle the data, but the processors on the devices are getting faster and faster. And so what an iPhone 6 could do compared to what an iPhone um, 10s can do, um, the processor in there with it handling the maps and everything else is a lot faster. Um, so why is Florida third on the list was one of the qu questions, um, list of the most data in ed maps. And that is probably most likely because, um, in Utah and in Minnesota, ed maps has become their database of record for, um, invasive plants. And there's a lot of people at the County level, um, and, and with, and working for the state as well that are getting paid to do, um, EDMAPS reporting. And so that's coming in and, and they're, um, getting a lot of reports that way. And so that's part of why, um, it's higher on the list. So any other questions before we wrap this up? Well, I encourage everybody to, I think that the Halloween um, weed count goes on through this weekend. So download the apps if you haven't already um, and give them a try, go out and report things. And uh, we will try to do these updates more often in the future. Thanks for joining me on Friday afternoon.